Welcome, you curious deep diver. Today, uh, we're plunging right into the snowy, complex world of winter weather forecasting. Mm. Specifically, we're dissecting the Northern Hemisphere winter of 2025-2026. It looks like it's being strongly shaped by um, a developing La Nina event. That's right, yeah, we've got a whole stack of reports, different models. Exactly, and our mission is to unpack what this means for snowfall. Yeah. You know, from the Rockies all the way to the Alps. And it's clear right off the bat, this isn't going to be straightforward. The forecasts are really pointing towards a, well, a winter of contrasts. Contrasts, yeah. Lots of high amplitude events. So big swings. Big swings, exactly. Yeah. And maybe even a significant pattern shift mid-season. Okay, but what's really fascinating here, you were saying, is the La Nina itself. It's expected to be weak. Yeah, quite weak, actually, and pretty brief, too. The forecast is for it to peak late autumn, maybe early winter and then uh, fade back to neutral condition. Neutral ENSO, right. Right, back to average Pacific temps by the second half of the season. Yeah. And that brevity, you know, it's really pivotal. But hang on, that raises the question then. If it's weak and brief, why would it still have such a significant impact? That seems counterintuitive. Well, you've hit the nail on the head there. That's a central challenge in this forecast. While the ocean temperatures signal weak La Nina. Okay. The atmospheric response that's actually been looking more robust. It suggests the global circulation might react almost as if it's a stronger event. Interesting. So the atmosphere is kind of running with it more strongly than the ocean conditions might suggest. What does that look like, that robustness? Well, what we're seeing in the models is um, a more amplified jet stream pattern. That's yeah. a pretty classic atmospheric response, even to a weaker ocean signal. Amplified jet stream. Okay, so let's connect the dots. What does this all mean for, you know, you listening and your winter plans? North America first. Right, North America. For the early winter, I think December, early January, expect a fairly classic La Nina pattern. Which colder than average temps, above normal snow for, say, Western Canada, the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies, uh, the Great Lakes too, that amplified jet helps push that cold, wet air south. Okay, standard La Nina playbook there. And the southern U.S.? Typically warmer and drier down there as the main storm track shifts north. Right, but here's where you said it gets really interesting. Some models showing below average snow for the Midwest and Northeast, that's, that's different, isn't it? It is. That's a significant deviation from what we'd usually expect with even a weak La Nina. It really highlights the complexity we're dealing with. So why? Why are some models showing that? Is it a different jet configuration or something else entirely? That's an excellent question. It suggests other factors might be muscling in, influencing the storm track, maybe uh, some early season atmospheric blocking patterns. Maybe blocking. And if we zoom out to the bigger picture, we absolutely have to consider the wild cards. Like... Uh, a potentially weakened stratospheric polar vortex. Ah, the polar vortex, always a factor. A weakened one could mean when? more Arctic outbreaks. Exactly. It increases the probability, you know, the chance of those really high impact Arctic air outbreaks diving deeper south. It doesn't guarantee them, but it loads the dice. So even if the overall pattern suggests one thing, a weak vortex could just unleash a blast of cold air. How does that interact with La Nina specifically? Well, it acts somewhat independently. A weakened vortex lets that frigid Arctic air spill south. It doesn't necessarily control where snow falls precisely, but it definitely boosts the intensity of the cold when an outbreak happens. And if that cold air meets moisture... You got a major snow event. Got it. Okay, let's pivot. What about Europe? You mentioned less direct impact there. Yeah, for our European listeners, the La Nina influence is generally less direct. The forecasts currently lean towards a greater probability of a um, mild and wet winter for most of the continent. Mild and wet, driven by the Atlantic. Primarily, yes. Persistent westerly flow off the Atlantic. The really cold air and the best chances for significant snow look like they'll be confined more to Scandinavia, maybe parts of Eastern Europe. So below average snow likely for the Alps and Western Central Europe. That's what the balance of probabilities suggests right now. Yeah. So why the big difference compared to North America? You mentioned the NAO. Exactly. For Europe, the forecast often hinges more on the North Atlantic Oscillation, the NAO. Now, historically, La Nina can sometimes favor a negative NAO. And a negative NAO can mean? That can open the door for a beast from the east scenario, severe cold spilling westwards from Siberia bringing snow. But crucially, 
The current models don't really support that strong negative NAO for this coming winter. They're leaning more neutral or positive. Leaning more neutral or perhaps slightly positive, yeah. And that tends to keep the coldest air locked up further north and east maintaining that milder, wetter Atlantic influence over most of Europe. Okay, so bringing this all together then, what's the sort of final takeaway from this complex picture? You're really looking at uh, a tale of two winters, potentially. Phase one, December, early January, likely aligning more with those classic La Nina impacts in North America. You know, snowy yeah. north, dry right. south. Right, but then phase two. Phase two, late January through March, that's where things look far more volatile, less predictable. And that's precisely because the La Nina itself starts to fade. Leaving other factors to take over. Exactly. Things like the polar vortex behavior, the NAO state, mm -hmm. they become more dominant drivers. Yeah. And they could be much more, well, unpredictable week to week. So those key uncertainties are really compelling. That weak ocean signal versus the strong atmospheric response. Mm. The differences between the models, especially for U.S. snow. Yeah, those discrepancies are significant. And then the behavior of the polar vortex and the NAO. Those are the real wild cards that could totally reshape the second half of the season. Absolutely. They demand constant watching. It's just a powerful reminder, isn't it? Long-range forecasting is all about probabilities, about shifts in the odds, not guarantees. Couldn't have said it better myself. So while Western Canada, the northern U.S. should probably prepare for a potentially snowy start. Really, every region needs to stay vigilant for those high-impact, maybe more episodic cold and snow events, especially later in the season as that La Nina fades. Vigilance is key, especially for those potential high-impact, shorter-duration events. So thinking about all this, What's the one thing that really stands out to you about this dynamic outlook for winter 2025, 2026? 